just like, it's so funny because you're just kind of like looking at this treacle skull and you're just kind of like... <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Culture Clash Corner, our new shows where we're gonna um, crash different cultures together. So today we're gonna talk about Halloween. I'm Lena, I'm from Germany. I'm Anja, I'm from Denmark. I'm Christy and I'm from Scotland. In Germany we don't really celebrate Halloween, so I'm a Halloween fresher. So you have to teach me Halloween. The tradition of trick-or-treating actually originated in Scotland. It's, here we call it guising. And it's not, you can't just like go up to your neighbor's door and knock on it and just say trick-or-treat and they give you Halloween. You actually have to like do a trick or like perform a song or a poem or something and then you get your sweets. So there's a little bit of work involved in it as well. And some of the things they give you as well, like you get everything from like your normal like chocolate and fudge and things like that. Like or there's people that give you fruit, they give you apples, or they can give you monkey nuts, which are like, yeah, you get big bags of monkey nuts. <laughs> and like, nobody knows why. They just kind of give you them, and you're just like, what am I supposed to do with these? And like, they're always in the bin by like bonfire night, and you're just like, there's no point in them. And in Denmark, when we celebrate, it's not really on Halloween. Uh, we do it in, in February, and when we go around, we get money instead of candy. So that's sort of, there's sort of a different thing going on there. I don't really understand why you get nuts and stuff though. That's no, I don't think we even understand that. <laughs> yeah, in Germany we don't really celebrate Halloween. We have another holiday. It's called St. Martin. And it's, I think, two weeks after Halloween. And there all the children um, yeah, go around the neighborhood and um, yeah, they have to sing a song. And then they get treats. Oh, okay, so it's kind of similar. Okay. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of I similar. Think, I think it has that common denominator in all of our countries that you have to do something to get whatever you're coming around for. Mm -hmm. Like in Denmark, we do we have very specific songs. Like you, you sing at Festelau, which is our holiday. Um, and it, like they have very specific meanings and stuff. Okay. Uh, nobody really... Like you know the whole trick and treat. Yeah. Like, you don't you don't don't actually do something bad. Like you don't go out and TP a house. But, uh, <laughs> but you might sing about being bad, mm -hmm. and doing bad stuff. So how do you dress up for Halloween? Um, well, dressing it's kind of gone a bit nuts. Like you can like when you're a kid, you try and be scary. Like you dress up as like witches <laughs> and like ghouls and things like that because that's the the tradition really. Like because kids have to like in order to get the candy, they would dress up and like they would try and ward off evil spirits and things like that and it just kind of went from there but now like you get kids going out as like really weird things like always like, going out obviously you get your superheroes and things like that um the weirdest thing i ever dressed up for halloween was uh, an american football player <laughs> okay <laughs> i was in i was in like i was maybe about i think i was 10 and i didn't have a halloween costume and my dad's a really big american football fan and so what he did is he basically got towels and duct taped them to my shoulders <laughs> and, and put on an american football jersey <laughs> and made me go trick-or-treating and then um, I won a prize for, uh, at a, a costume competition. I came second, oh, so, hey. so it kind of pays off in that respect. In Germany, if you really want to celebrate Halloween, then you have to be scary. Because we have another holiday again <laughs> in February. It's called Carnival, and there you can dress up yeah, funny or yeah, like everything you want to be. Yeah, we kind of do the same thing. Like If you're adopting the American Halloween, then you're kind of scary. And if you're like actually celebrating Festa Laum, then you can be whatever. Originally, uh, they dressed up like way, way back in the 1500s and stuff. They also dressed up, and so we sort of carried that over. But now it's more the whole like you can be a toothpaste, or you can be whatever you want to be. <laughs> my one of my favorite costumes that was like my uh, dad made me he cut cardboard box and put like the uh, you know the little sticks where you ride around like their little horse head on them. Oh, like, you, yeah. like you're a writer or something, so he put that in and it, it made me look like a jockey. Like, it had fake <laughs> legs on the side, so oh like, I, was God. I was walking around with this thing, like, with a head sticking out, a cardboard box, and it was really elaborate, and I had to hide it at school, because kids would, like, try and steal my costume when I took it off. Did yeah. you, do you guys have, like, games and stuff that you do at your festivals? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we do have so we have at Festelaum. At Festelaum we had this thing where um so you heard about piñatas. Yeah. yeah. Basically we take a big barrel and we put like little cardboard cutouts and stuff like on it that looks like cats and different things. And originally they put cats in it and then they beat up the, the barrel and then when the bottom flew out and the cat 
ran away, then the, whoever made the, the cat run away or you know fall out dead, whatever happened first, uh, would be the, the cat king. Uh, and they would not have to pay taxes for a year. Now it's a little different. Like now we now we beat a barrel and candy comes out of it. And if you make the barrel fall, you're cat king and you get like a little plastic crown. Um, so that's a little bit different, but get candy out of it. And uh, a very aggressive country. <laughs> if you really like the, um, the tradition and it's, it's, oh. it's not as bad as it sounds. The, the games that are in Scotland are so much more tame. <laughs> so carving a pumpkin, is that is that a thing? Just yeah, just uh, I think it, it's more, you can do it here. Um, traditionally in Scotland, it's like you carve turnips. <laughs> turnips? <laughs> turnips, or like, <laughs> or you call them neep. We call them neeps here, like haggis, neeps and tatties. But like, you, like basically, turnips can either go like be that size or they can be the size <laughs> of like that there, or they, they can be huge. And like, you carve, you carve like faces into them and like you put them outside your door and it was like to try and again, ward off evil spirits and witches and things like that. Um, and when that got, and obviously when people left Scotland and went to America, they kind of like took, <laughs> took the tradition with them. And because like, you can't, pumpkins don't, because the reason we don't use pumpkins here is because they don't grow here. So mm. turnips are kind of what yeah, we have. Yes. <laughs> I just imagine that in Ireland, they probably use potatoes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, well, thank you guys for watching and we'll probably see you soon with the next episode of Culture Crash Corner. Bye! Bye.